I got three of them. Cut another one or two open off camera and then you know, cut the copper out, something like that. And anybody that's interested in the kayak, I got it in yesterday and the pedal drive is supposed to be in today. And then I made a little rack in the back of the truck yesterday for the to load it up. Put fishing pole stuff like that in there and put the kayak kind of up, up and over it. And uh, I'll show you that here towards the end of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and get going on this. As you can see, the grinding disc, which is one of the Go Yonder cutting discs. If you're interested in those, I have them on my Amazon affiliate link, affiliate page, and there's a link in the description below the video. Good blades are thin, they wear good, last a long, pretty long compared for a cutting disc. And I'm, I buy them in lots of 50 for about $27. I think you can also get them in lots of 25 or lots of 10. So if you don't want to put out that much at one time. So I'm going to go ahead and get going on this. So if you got earbuds in, turn your volume down or pull them out. And here we go. As you can see, I got the stainless steel pan here, and it's got a pipe over here on this end that drains down into a five gallon bucket. Should I get excessive amount in it? I got a barbecue grate in here so that the compressor doesn't, or sealed unit, whatever you want to call it, so it's not laying in the oil. Making a big mess. So, I'll see if I got. Now, on these, you can take some of these are just cast iron. This one looks like it's cast aluminum. So, if you want to take the time, you can pull those four bolts and get that little piece of cast. Then you got basically four bolts here. So I'm going to get the gloves off so it's a little easier to work. 
Okay, now we'll find out what size of God looks like it's the uh, 16. It's not a little bigger than that. Possibly metric. I may have to get my metrics or my regular socket set out. That one's working. Nine millimeters. That nine seemed to fit that one just fine. It doesn't want to fit that one for some reason. Had it on the wrong nail. Yeah, this nine seems to fit. There's really just no, not much clearance between the, the bolt and the spring. Of course, you can remove the springs. There we go. Yeah, sometimes it's trial and error. So we got that off. That looks like the same size. Bit of gasket on there. But other than that, it's clean cast aluminum. Okay, we're back again. Got this stuff cut open and went in and took a cool down break. Yes, thermometer say at 99 right now, so. I know we got a heat index of at least 103. So, get done what we can. I already cut the tops, the ends off of these. This is the one that came out of that big uh, switch pump. So, we'll, we'll break it down first and get a weight on it. And I'll cut the ends off of this one and show you how I do it. Usually I use an angle grinder. Some people ask why I don't cut the, use a plasma cutter to cut the compressor to seal the units open. And a lot of times, the problem I have is these uh, little plastic inserts here, the plastic sleeves. It gets too hot in there and these plastic sleeves start to melt and they kind of melt to the, to the steel and they melt to the copper. And uh, that makes it very difficult to pull out because they're basically welded in there. And I get stuff I get stuff like this. And it's very hard to get off of there. This will be stuff I may have to just yeah, melt down if I want to make a copper ingot or something. But uh, if I sell it to the yard like that, they're going to pay me insulated copper prices. <coughs> and, uh, and that's pretty low, 50 cents a pound compared to $3 a pound just for that little bit of plastic. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not too anxious to sell that stuff. We get going on this, we got earbuds in, turn the volume down or unplug them. A little late, huh? that part of it. I'm going to take my little tool here and get these little pieces of that plastic sleeve off that 
that it leaves behind. Trying to get this stuff as clean as possible for the yard. Now, some of that stuff with a little plastic on it might be able to take it to Al's Recycling. They may not say anything about it. It just depends on, on how picky their, their buyer is, really. So, that's where a lot of the stuff matters. And, you know, prices always matter and how clean it is. Your yard is going to want it to a certain degree of cleanness compared to what their buyer wants. You know, you have to prepare it for what your buyer wants and they prepare it for what their buyer wants. So that's kind of where where that goes. Okay now what I do on this end, let me get the glove off this part. For me it's awkward with gloves on. I, I like using these little hook blades. Because then if I use a straight blade then it would Get, I get in there and I just, it just dulls the blade when I run it across the copper. Or these, these hook blades, they, they can get up under there pretty good. Or you can even sometimes just drag it. Okay, it'll be uh, Get me an ice cream bucket here. Scale, zero it out. Usually what I do where I have a lot of wires or strings bunched up together. I try to cut it there and then I try to hunt around for the loose ends. Usually on one side or another you're going to get it and it's just going to unravel and make it nice and easy. All your strings just right there. And then carefully pick this out. A couple pieces of plastic in there. Yeah, so we're going to start on that one, and I jumped onto this one, so we'll just set this bucket aside here in a second. Let me get it out of the way, and then we'll go ahead and do that big one from that, which we can get a weight on just this one end. Just the end that I cut off. Weighs 14 ounces, which is three quarters of a pound. So just the end off of that thing is three quarters of a pound. Okay, we're back. Finished tearing those ones down so I could get a weight. And we'll chisel that one out here in a second. Finish that up. I think it's pretty heavy. Seven point six pounds, so that's not too shabby. About twenty one dollars right there. Yeah, we'll grab these wires and give them a tug. These are coming the other direction. So. Yeah, if you're new to scrapping and don't have many tools yet, of course, air chisel really comes in handy, so compressor is really good tool to have. I started out with just a little bitty one gallon tank on the small air compressor. So needless to say, I spent a lot of time waiting for that thing to build pressure back up. But it got the job done, it just took longer. So, I mean, you can start with what you have or start small. Start small and always try to put a little bit back, you know, have something to sell, keep the cash flow going. But try to, you know, put a pound back here, a pound back there. You know, it adds up and then get two or three buckets, four buckets full. Yeah, three bucks a pound, three dollars a pound, you get roughly a hundred dollars a bucket. You take it in and get you a good compressor. 
air chisel. And what I've done here on the air chisel, I've modified the bit a little bit. So you just put it in there, catch it. And sometimes it doesn't like taking a whole bunch at once, so either that or these strings are holding it. trying to pull the wire in behind it too. So I'll go to the shallow side. Yeah this one's not getting too anxious. There we go, part of it. I need to get that uh, over here that we started for that one. hit it with a hammer. Bust some of that glue loose. <laughs> I'm sure most yards won't say anything if you have a little bit of stuff on there. I try to get it clean as possible. Kind of taking my time coming in and cooling off and stuff like that waiting for the pedal drive to come in for the kayak. So you guys, when I show it to you, you can see the, the whole ball of wax, not just the kayak, but I'll pick it up when I get this part, part done. You got the idea here anyway. I know this has got to get boring here, just picking all this little stuff off of there. Okay, back in a bit. Okay, we got it done. Finally, it took a while. I was going to go in the house, take a break, but I thought, no, I'm going to go ahead and finish it up. And, uh, like I said, the first part was seven, seven pounds, six ounces for right right there. This has roughly $21. Now we'll see how much of that one weighed by itself. Four pounds, two ounces. That's what came out of that, that sewage pump. That's about $12 just by itself. Not too shabby. So, Those, those of you that want to stick around and see the kayak, stick around. For those of you that just come here to see the teardown then uh, and the cleanup, got 11 pounds, about $33 worth of copper right there. Not not bad. But, but uh, if you just want to see the cleanup, you guys can go ahead and cut out if you want. I want to remind everybody about the Amazon affiliate link down below. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe like button notification bell you know the routine and for those of you that want to see the kayak well uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cool off real quick and then we'll show the kayak so see you in a minute okay so here we are at the truck and I uh, had two pieces of 10 foot 2 inch PVC I cut it down to 8 foot and uh, I put this unistrut in there where it sits kind of in a pocket where I have the, uh, you can kind of see maybe there. And 
and then up in the front it's sitting in the same kind of pocket and then I put a bungee on it to hold it backwards so it make it very hard to slide forward. <coughs> I'm almost thinking about moving these 2x4s more to the left but I got to leave three or four inches at least on the side that way maybe the whole kayak and everything can run to the side, but I, I want to put it on here and see just how much room I have first. And then maybe slide the whole thing to the side. I left a couple inches to the front so that I can slide the thing forward, slide it forward, and then slide it to the left. And then this side will pick up. As you can see how it sits, sits in the little pocket there, then I got it bungeed back. But it's got a wheel and a keel, so I can so it'll roll on the back end, and I can kind of roll it up here, pick up the front of it, and set it on there, and then grab the back, lift the back up, and slide it on in there, and then put a strap over the front, maybe strap it to the headache rack, and then I can use some straps here, maybe going down to the where I hook my safety chains for the trailer. That way I can throw my camping gear, fishing gear down the bottom. Yeah, have all my gear down below then slide the kayak in up here so should work seems good and solid I just need to put a couple of a 90 degree or 45 degree end caps on here you know to give kind of a more of a starting point instead of having to ride on that edge so now we'll go over and we'll check out the kayak yeah okay here we are Pedal drive is in. Cam in the tripod here in a few minutes and we'll buckle it down in there. Got the seat and seat straps are adjustable so you can lean back in it if you want. Tighten them up to be more straight up and down. Got a two pole holders back here. And then it's got the tracks here. And I've got a adapter that will fit in these tracks for the uh, fish finder, the transducer, uh, cup holder, and then uh, another rod holder. So if I want to troll, that would be real nice in this thing, trolling, because you just kind of pedal with your feet, you steer with one hand, and you just got one hand for the fishing pole. It's got built-in handles here. You got more accessory track back here on the back. Get a little hatch you can get into here to access the inside of the hole. Get your drain plug. And I'll show you here how the rudder works. Right now I got the rudder in the up position, but just, just moving this like this. What they call the paddle leash right here. So it kind of holds your paddle in place. Now you got the string right here, which I'll probably have to move the knob, move the knob down. But you pull this up and out of the bracket, and then it lets the the rudder down. And this whole kayak's wanting to slide when I try to raise that up. Okay, I'm going to grab the. tripod okay I guess it's all the way in there okay we got it I guess so here we got a chain tensioner and I wasn't I was having trouble getting getting this latch here under the lip. Now I've noticed I had two screws here so I could adjust this up and down so I got it hooked up in there. Now the nice thing this thing set up where no matter where the pedal is you can push this down push that down and turn the pedal until it stops and when it stops the prop should be lined up 
to where it'll come straight on up and out of there. And that, that slides forward as this comes up and then turn the prop sideways and it'll rest right there. Let's slide this forward just a little bit where the prop will clear the little stand on. I'm gonna show you how to drop this down and engage it. Hopefully, deep enough water, you just turn your prop, lower it right down in there. And is it gonna hook? There hook, latch it down. One nice thing is you can be going along, say so if you get a fish on, you want to keep your line tight, then you just pedal backwards. It's instant reverse. Okay, I'm going to drop the tripod down. I don't remember what the gear ratio is, 10 to 1 or something. So for every, every turn of the pedal, every one revolution of the pedals, the prop turns 10 turns. They say this thing's pretty quick, but see you're going along like this, pedaling, and then say if you want, want to reverse, you can. So, I think I'm going to have fun with it. Hopefully catch some fish. I got some of my, uh, a lot of the accessories are already in, but the one thing I haven't got yet is the paddle leash. I think that's supposed to be in tomorrow. So I might try to get this out there on the water Thursday. That way I can get the paddle leash and I can wrap the, the leash, say, around the paddle somewhere and uh, hook it onto the hook it onto something. That way, if I do tip over, the paddle's not going anywhere. And same thing with the fishing poles. We got where these two pole holders are back here. They come with a, a little leash, and that one's got one over there too. So I can hook that on maybe the, and, it, and it's elastic, so I can hook it on maybe one of the, the eyelets. A lot of people put milk crates or something in the back here to store their gear. I, I do have room under the seat for a couple of those little flat tackle boxes. So I can take a little bit of tackle with me. But what it'll probably be is I'll have the pole holder up front. So, and I put rig up three poles, rig them up differently. So whatever I want to try, I can have one for trolling, one for top water or something, crankbait. You know, rig them up differently and fish with one. That doesn't seem to be working and swap over one of the others. So. All I got to do is really change change rods, and shouldn't have to have much tackle. It's probably the biggest downfall. There's not a lot of room for a lot of gear on here, but with my weight, the weight of the kayak, I'm about 35 pounds away from being maxed out on as far as weight goes. So I have seen where they put a little one of these mounts here, mounted it right there, and put their cup holder up there, because that seemed like quite a reach. They, I did watch a video where the, there is a guy that makes a three inch seat riser. So once I get used to this, see how stable it is and everything, I may order one of them. That way I can you know, raise that seat up three inches and then give me more, that'll give me more room underneath to put gear. And from what I understand, I could put a, GoPro mount or something right here that bolts on yeah so I can you know put a two or three foot pole sticking up you know GoPro mount pole to where get, get a good shot I can mount one back here that way I have back of my head and forward forward view so so now I just got to do a little customizing, but it's ready for the water. I could uh, cut a pool noodle or something and put over the center of that paddle and then uh, 
if it does fall in, it'll float. So we can always go that route. But yeah, it's ready to go. It's ready to put on the water. So hey, I want to thank everybody for watching. And uh, I don't know how soon I can get some video of this on the water. But uh, might might have to wait till I get a GoPro and get some mounts. And that might be a couple months. But yeah, by then it might be getting pretty cool. So it might be springtime before you really see any on the water video. But uh, I think it's almost like having a trolling motor, except for I'm the motor. But that would give me some knee exercise. I've always had a strong back, but you know my knees were my weak point. So this will help exercise my knees and my legs and my arms, shoulders. You know, if I'm paddling. So you know, thing to do is get out there, have fun, paddle around, get some exercise, pedal around and piddle around and just have fun see some you know scenery enjoy life maybe catch a few you know do a little fish and catch a few fish i wanted it where i can fish but don't necessarily have to but like i said this this string here is just so long i might go ahead and figure out where it's got to be to be in the down position and then maybe tie a knot in it and shorten it up some I'll have to get in it, sit in it, and see how hard it is to pull, and and uh, then judge it from there. And see, it does kind of the same thing. You got the lash down here. You loosen that up, and then you can slide. It slides back here, and it dips into different spots here for, for the length of your legs. So I'll have to get out there and start pedaling, and just see if, I, if I'm too far back. I'm going to. I'm six two, so I'm starting all the way back. And then we'll go from there. I may have to move it up one or two notches. I kind of like the the camo, but well, they're all kind of camo. One's green, one's orange, one's a uh, ocean blue camo. But uh, if this thing's stable enough, who knows? I might get out and do some duck hunting. I can always throw my ducks in the back. So get a dry box, keep my shells in. I'll have to figure out. How to make a shotgun <laughs> shotgun rack or just hold a shotgun in my hand while my right hand while I pedal and steer steer with the left. Who knows? I don't know if I want to get out there in the cold weather and the cold water anyway, but later I might get a John boat, you know, something a little wider, more stable. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching. This is getting kind of long already, so give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and uh, happy scrapping, and may your loads be heavy, and price is good. See you later. Bye-bye.